Hi kids, welcome to Terry on Tuesday. Um, I've realised that in the last few weeks, uh, my videos have been all over the shop, generally because I'm all over the shop. Uh, sometimes they're edited, sometimes they're not edited, sometimes they're just quick rambles. I still haven't got into the groove of doing regular videos. Uh, I think a lot of that is because I've got so much on work-wise, etc, etc. But I shall endeavour to be better in future, I promise. Anyway, uh, this week's video is, uh, you've seen some of it previously, but I thought I'd get some more clips together about what's happening with the Borg figure. Uh, so yeah, let's get into that. Uh, gentlemen, we can rebuild him. Not really. Right, he's had, a, he's had a good more of a head shave. He's had some holes drilled in randomly. Uh, I've got rid of his eye. I've given him a Mark Chopper Reed ear roll cut. Thinned out the uh, the straps around the wrist and cut right around, apart from all the other holes in his legs and arms, I've cut right around his his manly abs and popped that off. There he, ooh, it's joined to a thing. So I'll put back in there. There was nothing in the chest cavity at all. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stuff this this up so he hasn't got a, a dip, and then I'm gonna just get the old uh, sanding attachment on the Dremel and smooth that off. Obviously cut off the uh, the rod at the back and that's a nice ab plate ready to go on the front of the suit. We have a uh, ruined Borg man action man, head chopped off, belly hole plugged with EVA and E6000, uh, drilled a load of holes just in case I wanted to put some cables and stuff in him but then I realized that I'd have to make holes in the jumpsuit, which might ruin the jumpsuit. So I'll probably do away with that idea. But to begin with, I can't start detailing him until I actually get the jumpsuit on him. And to get the jumpsuit on, I've got to get the feet on. And to get the feet uh, on and everything else, I do want to glue his ankles in place just so he doesn't fall over anymore. So he can be in a kind of standy uppy position. You can't sort of see him on this angle, but you know. Okay, so what I need to do, point the toes. Right, now to decide whether the jumpsuit's gonna be the right way round, i.e. hood on the back of his head and the zip at the front, or spin it round to have a clean front and a zip up the back. I think, let's have a look at his back. There's, there's, there's a dip there that could hold the hood if I tuck the hood into the top. Um, but that would leave the zip on the front. I'm going to put the zip on the back, I think. I think the plan is get some glue in the boots, dunk the feet in, Get them at the right angle, leave them until the E6000's gone off, and then put a few drops of super glue or crazy glue down in on the ankle joint to keep it at that angle. <clears throat> His feet are in, so I'm going to stand him up reasonably like that. I think what I can do now, make use of this hole in his crotch and drop some super glue in there at some point, maybe to keep the legs sturdy. But saying that, he's, all his joints are pretty stiff anyway. He's not gonna sort of tip over anytime soon. But now, so look, there's no glue squirting out the back or anything. No, it looks pretty good. Um, right, yeah. So basically what's gonna happen is when I'm good and ready, Pull the trouser legs back down. <sighs> so yeah, I can't really do anything with this hood. I might have to just snip it off. Uh, get some scissors on there. Uh, and then zip up the back. And the head is not with me at the moment. It's elsewhere. But uh, we'll glue that on. But yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Okay, tool arm. Um, I haven't done much with it since you saw it last. I stuck that piece on the side, a big black plastic piece. Lots of black in this, hard to see it. But that will go something like that, clunk, 
So he's got a cool looking arm there. So these pictures are really bad. It's not good lighting in here. It's my fault for doing it in the evening. I should do more stuff in the daylight. But yeah, that's going to basically glue onto there. As his his bogey bogey arm. Can I sit sit him up? Let's see if I can sit him up like that. So yeah, uh, the arms about the right size. Uh, I've got the head. Um, currently, the head has had a bit of a shave, and uh, I've drilled some holes all over him. Uh, made a slot in the side of his head for something that didn't work out. But basically, that's going to go in. <laughs> Stuff that in the hole. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's going to go on like that. <clears throat> so last night, uh, as you'll see, I put the glue the the boots on his feet, and I glued the stomach plate onto the thing with a blob of E6000, which, as you can see, is stuck to the uh, see so stuck to the the undersuit, but obviously not him. But I think that's going to hold. I think that's all right. I mean, it doesn't need to be bulletproof as long as it stays on. So that's going to be painted satin black. But today, oh, talking of satin black, uh, I've got to paint that satin black. Oh, sorry, I'm going to paint that uh, tool arm satin black. But today, Millie put. Um, yeah, time to do the head. Basically, I was. Uh, where is he? There you go. Uh, I was looking at all my greebly bits here, and I was looking for bits that could possibly glue onto his face, etc. But they don't seem to fit, and I don't have enough curvy bits and stuff. So I think I'm just going to go old school and sculpt a piece to go over his uh, eye. And we'll see how well that sticks. It may not stick on his head. If so, I'll have to glue it. Um, but I'm going to sculpt a bit to go over his robotic eye. Um, and then I can still put in little things like this. Oh, sorry, you can't say. Little tiny greeblies like that can to go in the eyepiece. But I've got to make it out of milliput first. Now, if you don't know what milliput is, it's uh, a modeling kind of putty. It's basically a polyester putty. Uh, it comes in two colors. You've got green. Uh, which is the putty itself, and then you got the dark grey one, which is a lot harder, because I've kept this for too long. And this is actually called the hardener, fittingly enough. So you've got to... Oh dear me, this is rock hard. See, the problem is, if you don't use this quick enough, it goes hard. It's still usable. But, goodness me, yeah, see, it should be a nice light grey like that, but it's going green on the outside, but... It's very, very, <laughs> it's very, very difficult to get this. You've got to get some warmth into it and basically squish it until it's soft. This is always pretty soft, uh, as long as it's not years old. So I'm going to, I'm going to speed up, I think. This is great stuff, it doesn't, you know, it, it's not like clay, it's sticky and it goes rock solid. So I'm just trying to give it some adhesion and stick it on there nicely. And if even if it pops off, I can glue it on once it's gone hard. Um, but let us just get it on there first and then I can sculpt it a little bit. Remove this ear roll. Um, is that enough? If you can see that, sorry, I should adjust this camera a little bit, but uh, see what we can do. I'll try and keep it here so you can see what I'm up to. Um, this stuff is uh, is great. It'll you can fix leaks in pipes. It'll set under water. You can drill it afterwards. You can sand it. Uh, it's really good stuff, and it's made in Wales, made in North Wales, apparently. Um, any more? Yeah, I guess so, up here. I say, I can always add to this later on. I've got loads of milliput. You know, I can uh, mix some more up. It's kind of good. 
Okay, it's easy to smooth off. It's still sticky. Um, you've got about, I would say, 20, 30 minutes to work with this before it starts going rock hard. Um, and it goes properly hard in about, you know, five or six hours, I suppose. But that's a, a big slab on his face. Now I'm going to try and make it less organic by chopping bits off it with a whole sculpty tool. Not wearing my specs like I should be. So my eyesight is terrible. That's quite nice. I like that. And just sort of smooth it off if I can. Right. Give that a wipe. Clean tools is what you need. Um, you can lick a finger and do that with it. Smooths it off really nicely. Unfortunately, if you keep licking your finger, you end up getting this on your tongue, which I've done quite a lot, and I really shouldn't. It's not good for you. I mean, it hasn't hurt me yet, but, you know. Right, how's this going to go up here? See, I'm making this up as I go along. I've got no plan, no sketches. Just whatever I feel looks okay. Aesthetically. Give that a smooth... Um, I do not know which direction to go in now. I think I'm going to go straight across. And let's try sort of diagonally up. So pop that off. Pop that off. The thing about Meliput, it's like you can you can make stuff with it in, in two stages. You You... You do it while it's soft, sculpt it and mold it and smooth it, etc. And then when it goes off, you do a bit more work to it. You can sand it and, uh, as I say, you can drill it and sand it and do stuff to it after that. So I just quickly smooth that bit off there. There you go. Helps it blend a bit nicer. Um, see the edges are edges along here are a little bit kind of scruffy, but I'm thinking once it's uh, I mean, you can get, I could get a, a paintbrush, you know, with water on it and smooth it out like that. But I think it'll be fine. I'll, you can get the scalpel on it later on. Let's chop that off. What to do with this jaw bit? Um, I'll go across like that. It's like having a shave. Uh, like that. Then I think I'll just take that off there um, back edge here I'll leave it for now I'll add stuff to it because I know he's gonna have more things around the back so there's a basic shape um, reasonably nice I'm happy enough with that I think it needs some minute tidying up Get the uh, edge down. There we go. Um, now, see if I can get a little bit of detail on here before it goes off. So I'm going to just put a line. Um, unlike things like FIMO, obviously this doesn't need to be fired. It goes hard on its own. Um, but uh, this has got a very... It holds detail really well. FIMO, I found, is bouncy. Sculpey's a little bouncy. Um, but it does hold detail really well. You know, fine detail. I'm told you can push this into moulds. As long as you've got a good enough release agent in the mould, something to lubricate the mould, you can push this into moulds and pop it out once it's gone off. But... Uh, I don't think I, I think it's too sticky to drag at the moment, but I'm just going to do that with it. 
And that looks, I don't know if you can see that, if it's focused, it's kind of looking all right. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. Um, the camera's on a really weird angle, so I can't tell if you can see it good enough. But I'll take photos if all else fails. Um, I know there are sculptors probably watching this who are better than me. Uh, I never said I was an expert, just a very enthusiastic enthusiast. Um, I need a circle or something down there. Have I got anything I can use to impress? Don't impress me much. Ah, tiny, tiny, tiny little spring. And you use that as a, as a circle punch, basically a hole punch. Just push that on there. You see, you see the circle. There you go. Um, and that's all you need to do with that. Um, now, um, before it goes off, I need to make an indent in there. And I'm going to whack them on like that. Oh, he looks good. Just squish him down. So the milliput should stick to him. Should stick to the greebly as well. Um, that should be it. Um, I don't think that's going to stick, to be honest. But I could always put some more milliput around the edge to glue it. Or just super glue it. But that is better. That is better. I think what I'm going to try and do now is make a hole. Oh no, there's a hole there. So when I start putting cables and stuff on, I'll have this hole. Which hopefully won't be clogged up with milliput. So I can push cables and wires into things like that. I think I need more stuff here. I did drill a hole in the ear hole, but I cannot, I can't work out exactly where that hole would be. I think it's further down. Let's have a look. I think I found it. I'll tell if I found it now. I'll push something into it. So I've got old, old faithful aluminium wire. Yep, that's gone right into the head. So good, 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 good. Carefully remove that. So I've got a hole now I know goes right into the head at the ear point. Smooth it out a little bit. And I can put cables and stuff in there. But I will build up more milliput around the head, the top of the head, and probably this side and the back. So we'll have a lot of good bits on him. Yeah, this is wobbling. But it's fine because I'll leave it there till it all goes off. It'll be the right shape. Super glue it all back on. And that, hopefully, if you can see that in focus. Here we go. Let's give you a quick look at it. Now it should be in focus. I think... That will be all right. Uh, the hole in his jaw is for another cable. He's going to have more stuff on the top of his head and the back. But that's the kind of important bit of the Borg, isn't it? Is they always have at least one sort of robotic bionic eye type thing going on. So, uh, so far, the resistance is futile. Cool. Uh, head's gone nice and hard and the eye thing hasn't fallen off at all stuck in there good and proper uh, what else have I done painted the obviously the abs are dry now painted that black and it fits on quite nicely also glued in in place uh, glued a, a greebly on here so I can put some wires through this this heat sink um, Still got to clean up that. I think I'll stick a greebly on top of it because it's, uh, you know, you can't really, uh, can't get much, much, most of that off. So I'll just stick a greebly on top, paint all these black. And uh, I want to do some more milliput now on the, uh, on the face, on the head. So clear a space, ladies and gentlemen. Where are we going to go now? More at the back of the head, I think.
Well, we've got this, this weird kind of metal washer type thingy. Might work like that. Let's squish him in. That'll do. All right, I've just got to make sure that that's flatter. Right, I don't want that to look like it's just been pushed into clay, so I so can find a screw or a bolt to go in there. How big is that? That is too big. Bang. That's a problem having these things too big. Got an idea though. Yeah, this, this piece that uh, I was going to use on the eye, I'll jam him in here. Right, I think I'm going to leave that for now. The mat does look a lot better. It's still a, a little shiny on the on the stomach, but a lot better than it was. Um, I'm going to go wash the brush because it needs washing with white spirit. Let's just chuck a bit down there. I'm not going to turn him around and do the back yet. Make sure everything's done on the front, I think. And uh, we'll be back later on with some, some more photos and hopefully some uh, some painting on the back to do. And this video was brought to you by, well, apart from me, Humbrol Paints. I think I'm pretty much done with sticking things on him now. Um, it's got to the point where I was chopping up random bits of plastic uh, and sticking them on. But I've also made sure uh, that there are lots of little bits that have holes in them for wires. So you can see I've started putting wires in. Um, uh, oh, that needs painting. See, it's white at the back there. Um, but I do need to finish painting them. Um, I could put a few more bits, maybe even cover the zip. Um, but I think I've got enough. I've drilled some holes in these pieces here for cables and stuff, if they'll fit. They may not fit now because they may be actually covered with glue, so who knows. Um, but I've started putting cables in, so this one glued in that chest thing there, went over through that piece there and I'm going to find somewhere to hide it. It doesn't fit in there, so I'll find somewhere else to put it, maybe down the shoulder. Um, this one goes in the, the thigh piece up, over the back, right down the right leg, and basically into the boot, to be honest. Um, I may do other things with it, glue it in place. Uh, I've done two small ones at the front, not sure where they're going yet. But I've painted the hand, I've stuck an extra bit on the arm, you see that chrome bit there? An extra chrome bit on the arm I quite liked. Uh, that still works, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, so uh, I painted the hand with this opaque sort of trans, trans opaque white that I, that I did use for the head. The head's coming along nicely. All I've got to really do is paint his eye details, which I'll do when I find a smaller brush than this and have steady hands. Um, but other than that, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. Um, oh, at th this point I would like to thank Rob Price for, uh, before Crimbo I think he handed me quite a lot of uh, painting equipment and stuff that he doesn't use anymore, including these amazing airbrush colours. I don't use the airbrush, 
but they're really good paints and I've looked them up and I'm going to get some more. They're not cheap, um, but they're very nice. So thanks for that, Rob. Macho appreciated. Um, so I'm like, do I glue the head back on the socket? And then I thought, well, what if I can make some kind of plug and just pop him in and out? So I've got that, which is like an ear plug. And I thought, oh, I, could, I could glue this into like the socket there and I could pop that there. And I thought, well, that's, that's still probably going to fall off. So then I thought, magnets, let's do it with magnets. There's no real reason for this to have to turn or, or come or pop off, but I just thought I'd, I'd go a bit nuts and use magnets. So I had these pieces, these sort of uh, knob things left over from the um, 1950s film projector, um, and they were, I've got that sort of detail on them. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there you go. So uh, it's a bit, it's flush at the moment, so I thought I'd carve the middle down a bit to fit a magnet in, and I E6000 a little earth magnet in there. The sort of earth magnets you get on eBay and use them for putting armour and stuff together. And then I did the same thing with his head and found a slightly bigger earth magnet. Uh, make sure they're putting the right way around. Super glued that one and uh, basically it pops on and it's really tight. I ain't going nowhere. So uh, I've also checked that this piece obviously is big enough to fit in the hole of the neck. Which is why the back is open at the moment. So basically, what I need to do, I think what I'm going to do is fill this cavity, oh you can't see it, fill the cavity in here with foam or sponge or something, so when I pop this down, I don't. it doesn't end up falling all the way into his body and I've lost it. But essentially that's going to go in there um, pretty much, in fact I can do it like this, it's going to go in, they are, and it's going to sit in the hole in his neck. And once it's glued in place, the magnet will hold his head on. Sorry, the magnet will hold his head on. Um, a bit lower than that, in fact, about five millimeters lower. Neck's getting in the way. Collar's getting in the way. Hang on. Get out. Come on. Get out of the way. It's better. So he's on now. Um, yeah, so basically, I'll, he'll be able to turn his head because he's on magnet and he can pop his head off. The other thing I thought was quite funny is the only other metal bits on the guy. Uh, and there's no magnetic bits in it, but his thigh plates. So in case he wants to carry his head at crotch level, there's always that, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that's a that's a rather handy way of uh, of keeping his head on. It's a bit, bit of a novelty. He's only going to be a display model because I'm never giving him to someone to play with. Um, but yeah, he goes on like that. Zip up the back. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to get some more cables into his into his head and around his face like the, the old school bog. Um, I have repainted all these bits in black with uh, a matte black. Uh, and lo and behold, the matte black that my mate Andy gave me is still... Well, I'll give you a comparison. Where is his feet? Right. Can you see his shiny toes there? That's matte black. I painted his... I thought they'd come out like the rubber of his boots. But the matte black has still got a bit of shine to it. Um, I did overpaint with the matte black that I used for this. Well, this is not exactly matte black. But I've also used this black paint for his head modules. And you can see there's, there's a little bit of shine to them. So I think I need to sort of give up the ghost as far as trying to attain a perfect matte black. Um, but I am happy with it. He is a right mess. Um, he he is he does look like he's been rolled in greeblies, um, but I don't mind. He's he's a fun little project, and like I say, I'm not doing this to win awards or or to be screen accurate in any way, shape, or form. I'm done with the screen accuracy thing. Um, I just want to have fun with it. I've got some very small wires here, which I think I'm going to put into the slots of this heatsink thing here. Get in there like that. It's quite a lot of slots, obviously, um, but it might be quite nice to have the, some of these filled up with wires that can then go into his face. I've got a hole in his, his cheek here. You know, he's got, a lot of Borg have holes in their, in their faces for some reason. He's got another hole in his head. Um, who knows? Um, so I'll try and make them quite neat. Um, but he's looking, he's looking like I wanted him to look. He's got that 
caked on makeup look to his face, not the latter green speckly bog uh, mottled version. And I understand why they evolved the look of the bog in the late in the films and in the later series. It's because the original um, design idea for the bog was to have them looking a bit like insects because they're like ants and they're they're all there's no there's not supposed to be a leader. They're supposed to be all drones, all connecting you know, uh, Wi-Fi to each other uh, as a collective um, until they thought we need a, we need a board leader. Um, so that kind of put the kibosh on that idea. But the whole ant idea is to have them all kind of, um, you know, uh, looking a bit more insectoid with, you know, shell parts and soft parts like an exoskeleton. Um, but I love, I love the next generation ones that are, you know, they're totally silent and they, uh, they're just very random. They've got cables, like I said, they're all over the place. Uh, you know, if they, they walk too close to a door handle, they're going to get snagged on something. Um, so I quite like the really messy, cobbled together look. Um, and for the modern day 1990s action man, uh, you guys in the States call him G.I. Joe, um, this redesigned version, especially now you're taking all his hair off, um, it's got a nice serious expression. I don't think the older Action Man, the British version, or what the Americans know as G.I. Joe again, um, would have a good enough face. This is quite, it's got a small head, like a, it's got that sort of uh, superhero proportions with a, the head being a third of, of the entire distance between his shoulders. So he's got that small head and wide shoulders thing. He's got a, a good sort of standing physique, big hands, um, or big hand in this case. And he looks quite, quite uh, imposing. So I'm liking that. Um, I'm not going to put any lights in the eyes. I, I should have thought ahead if I wanted to do that. But I might get something like a little rhinestone in red that might be handy. Could try that. If I find something interesting that could go in there, or like a tiny pearlescent kind of lens or something, I think a red rhinestone might actually work. Uh, be quite cool. Uh, yeah, so he's just about done. Uh, I will come back next time either after this clip or in a future video once he's completely finished but I'll aim to finish him off in the next few days um, it's just a matter of putting cables on really and uh, and painting his eye detail and that's about it for the Borg um, so I hope you found that fun um, it's great fun to do the hardest part was actually finding the, the Lycra hello, uh, finding the Lycra jumpsuit um, I still haven't been refunded for the one that apparently didn't turn up, um, but I managed to get this jumpsuit for about six ninety five, and cut the hood off it, and he's wearing it back to front with the zip on the back. Greeblies are from anything; you can make them out of everything, you know, bits of plastic, bottles, you name it. Chop things up, and, and, one, and you, as you can see, once you paint them all the same color black, it all kind of blends in, and it all looks quite, you know, interesting and random. So if you want to have a go at that, have a go at that. One thing I might do, I might glue him actually to a base, but he is, he's quite heavy, so he does stand quite nicely on his own. Um, there's not many poses you can put him in, he is posable, but at the end of the day, he's just going to be standing on a shelf, uh, resisting futilely, as they say. So, yeah, that's Borg. Alrighty, so that was Mr. Borg, and uh, he's, like I say, just about finished. There's only a little bit of painting to do on the eye, and maybe a few more wires, but apart from that, he's done. Uh, yeah, so look, good day. Monday. Done my... Is it Monday? I have no idea what day it is. It is. It's Monday. Um, at the moment, anyway, not for you. Uh, done my dishes on a Monday morning. Bought Easter eggs for the children. Uh, yeah, so uh, good start to the week, actually. Anyway, I will see you next week for another video of which I've got no idea what's going to be in it. Isn't it exciting? Okay, take care now. Bye-bye then.